Yo, what's up aliens? Ahi here with another tutorial. Today I wanted to go over the best mixing advice I ever got. I took this class a few years ago called EDM School that was put on by Dodge from Dodge and Fusky. I got to take a class with like Getter, Virtual Riot, Brills, who's Alice Dream now, Mike from Tortoro, and uh, Abstract. One of the things I saw that a lot of them were using was Span. Span is basically a free spectrum analyzer from Voxango and you can download it from their website for free. So there's a particular setting I was shown by Mike from Tortoro. If you go to this little gear cog up here and then change the block size to 4096, this is how I was taught. This basically increases the resolution. Now, if we play a saw wave in here, we can see the full spectrum. Now I'm gonna show y'all as I go up octaves, you know, just to show y'all, it's only, it shows everything between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Also, if you notice, it's sort of painful and anything that goes off the top of the range up here, oftentimes it's gonna be painful. So you wanna try to keep it in this range. And as we'll see, this negative 30 line will almost sort of be like a variable zero in a way, it's the most important line that you want to pay attention to oftentimes. This, everything between the negative 24 and the negative 30 uh, dB range on this particular uh, spectrum analyzer with the particular settings of 4096. Also, something to note in here is the RMS level, which is uh, root means sum, which is essentially the average loudness um, on here, though people are tending to switch over to LUFS, which is loudness units full scale, uh, which uh, also takes into account um, human perception and perceived loudness. But it's this is still a helpful measure to determine how loud your tracks are. Also in span is the correlation meter, which basically tells you if you're in phase or not. If you're all the way to the right here, it means you're in mono, which is, you know, phase correlation here means that there's uh, in the middle there's some difference between the left and right sides and then all the way to the left means it's completely out of phase this is all the way in phase now i'm going to apply some reverb it's going to take it out of phase a little bit especially the more i add the dry wet now in utility i have this utility set to 200 percent width so it's going to make it completely out of phase when i turn that on so we're only hearing the sides even if, yeah. Now, uh, if I turn it into mono with the reverb on, it's gonna go back into phase because I have the width set to zero on this one. And also it's interesting uh, why this is important is that if I turn on width 200, so it's completely out of phase, then it's been being sent through a mono signal, it's gonna completely disappear. And that's important when checking your bases to make sure your bases aren't out of phase because if you play through a mono system, your bases will completely disappear, which is the point of electronic music. And also, disclaimer, this these techniques I'm gonna talk about are specifically for like high energy bass music. Mixing a, a standard band, you do not wanna use these techniques. The principle is still useful but i would say that the kinds of things i'm going to be pointing out are specifically useful for high energy dance music edm bass music that kind of stuff what i want to do now is show y'all what a typically well mixed song looks like and it sort of has this shape right here there is essentially a a bump here in the low end it dips down around 200 uh 100 200 hertz and then comes back up and that the average uh, height of the lows equals about the average height of the highs. And you'll see we're going to be playing a, a number of Skrillex tracks and a number of bass nectar tracks. And then we're going to look at a bunch of tracks that I just typed in hashtag EDM on SoundCloud. And we're going to peruse through some of those and compare the mixes. And then I'm going to show y'all some of my own mixes from my latest album to show y'all how I've applied these techniques. Cool. So let's get into listening. I'm going to play a number of Skrillex tracks because I just think his mixes are insanely good and are a great show of this of this technique. So check it out. So we can see here the sub bass dips down, comes back up. Another track. The bass again 
huge dip here in the 100 to 200 hertz range and then comes back up this dip here ignore that that's because i'm using mp3s and mp3s cut out that frequency range that would normally not be like that uh, but let me play this again uh, you can see the bass will actually come up to here the negative 24 line almost yeah and you can see this coming up because that's like popping up so really the vocals are, tend to be really resonant again you can see there's sort of a dip here and then it comes back up and especially in that song when the hi-hats come in later uh they uh really pick up the high end and equal the average of the highs another huge dip here slopes back up and you can sort of see as these things pop up and this thing pops up they are about average now this song's a little bit quieter for a Skrillex song and so his sub bass only really comes up to this negative 30 line which a lot of older bass music really focuses around here and a lot of newer music so it comes up to here or in between the negative 24 and negative 30 again you see the dip and then the rise up again Again, you can see the dip. This one's a little less so. Now this song is really interesting. Again, there's that dip. But there's some mids that come in there. But it's often for not very long. Like the whole mix doesn't have a lot of mids. Again, a huge dip here. And comes back up. And when there is a significant amount of mids, it's generally for yeah, for not very long. Let's listen to the bass nectar tune. See again, there's a big dip. Hit bass nectar subs tend to be more closer to the negative 24 line. And then you can see here the average of the highs equals about the average of the lows. Yep, you can see the dip here again and the rise up. You're starting to see a pattern. Though some artists don't do this, especially in collabs of these artists, you tend to notice that the mixing is a little bit different. Like this AT Aliens one. A lot less high information, but when the hi-hats come in, uh, here I just skip to another part of the song where the hi-hats come in. And you can see that the average is about average of the lows. And there's a lot of mids in this particular song because of those vocals, but I noticed that the songs with a lot of mids uh, tend to have a gap again in the just uh, above it so that that 400 to 800 range there tends to be a gap if there's a lot of mids Bill Gates Space Nectar collab you can see again there's that dip here if there's a lot of mid content you can see that there's that dip in this range right here it's just so that way the there's like a distinction between the low end and the high end um, which is a really big thing in electronic dance music now we're going to play some of the songs i've randomly selected off soundcloud with the hashtag edm i don't know what these are going to be like <laughs> this doesn't even have any sub in it this is not mastered the mastered level would be up here thank you for trying this demo that has like a i don't even know why you left that in. Thank you for trying this demo. Anyways, this is a case where the bass is way too loud. Look at how loud the bass is compared to the average highs right there. And this is a problem I see with a lot of newer producers is that they have their bass way too loud uh, in comparison to their highs. Because oftentimes you're like mixing on speakers at home and you like want to feel the bass, but 
you know, when you translate that to like large speaker systems, you know, you're gonna have way too much bass. Um, that's something I see a lot. And then that one crash symbol is way too loud. I don't even know. It's having some phase issues here, you can tell. Not mastered. Again, this one's not mastered. And there's too much mid-range content. Again, there's this there's mud here. There's not really much distinction between the low mids and the subs and the hi-hats just aren't equaling the level. It, it could be okay if it was a, at a mastered level, but that low low mid stuff is not going to sound good on big speakers. Okay, so now I want to show y'all some a few of my tunes off my latest album, Spellbound, and just show y'all how I thought about mixing them and using th this technique. Man, this shit is sick, boy. <laughs> See my sub bass is really strong, and I've got this dip here, and then it comes back up. Shit is sick, boy. And later on in that song, when there's more shakers and hi hats, the average height of the highs does equal the average height of the lows. But also in house music, sometimes I notice that the highs can be a little bit lower. Now this one was just such a weird track to mix. But I think it came out all right. Like I would normally say that that low mid right there would not work, but it happens to work um, just because I spent a lot of time separating these two low fundamentals, this one and this one. You can see there's a huge gap in between them. And then there is a little bit of a dip here and then a rise. And you can see the average of the highs equals about the average of the lows, so that helps a lot. And these, I'm all talking about mastered levels. So you can see there's that big separation there, a bit of a dip in this range, and then it comes back up. And the average of these highs equals about the average of these lows, especially when those high hats come in. Again, this is one's a very clear dip and slope here. You can see a very clear dip in this section. And it raises back up and goes average of the highs equals average of the lows. And that, my friends, is a great way to exercise your ears and learn from other people's tracks. Um, so when I first started doing this, I listened to hundreds of other people's tracks and just watched it through span in these particular settings. And it just let me like hear, it let me see what I was hearing. Uh, another useful technique is to go through these tracks and then just EQ out like the high end or the low end. So with like a Ableton EQ, I'll just cut out all the high end and then I'll just listen to the low end. Or I'll do the opposite and just listen to the high end. And you, you get to really see that, man, that sub bass really makes most of these tracks happen, man. You know, without that sub bass, it just doesn't have the same power. Also, uh, interesting to note uh, is the RMS levels. A lot of these tracks are going to be uh, in that uh, 10 to... Six RMS range. See that one gets up to seven. This one's gonna be less. Yeah, around ten, negative ten. This one's really loud. 
Let's get down to the negative six. Oh, look at this, this one almost gets to negative five. Yes. Uh, let's see what some of the bass nectar tracks get to. Yep, about the same levels. Oh yeah, that one gets really loud. Negative four. This one's round negative, negative eight, negative nine. This one's a very dynamic track. Yeah, negative six. And also, another thing to say is that loudness does not equal better. Uh, the fact that these things work so loud is because of the mix down is so well done and because everything's been separated out. And if you want to learn how to get these really nice mix downs and separate all your tracks, I have another tutorial, which many of y'all have probably already heard, uh, the where I break down the Skrillex track and then I have a couple follow-up tutorials basically showing how I, I do how Skrillex does his routing and how I've been doing my routing and it just helps a lot in the mix down process and in the, the creation process so that way you're m making your song at a appropriate level so that way you won't have to do as much mix down. All right I hope this has been super helpful let me know in the comments and oh before I go, I wanted to share some of my Ableton racks. So we're going to be using Ahi's Dirty Sign Rack. I know that it says sign, but we're going to throw it on a, on a saw wave and check out what happens. Very cool, right? I think that's cool. Yeah. Now we're going to throw on my Dirty Sign Rack plus the Magic Box and the Dirty Sign Rack's uh, settings have been changed a bit totally different sound instant lead maker Ooh. what's this last one over here this is the ahi's magic sign distorter <laughs> we're on a saw wave Totally. Now, all these are part, uh, there's 20 of them, 20 Ableton racks, and they're only for $20. So I'm going to provide a link to those below. If you haven't checked them out, definitely check them out. They're really useful and interesting for bass music. All right. Talk to you later. Peace, aliens. I swear.